Hey guys, it's Sam. Today we're going to talk about soft contact lens material selection. So you're never going to find a lens that exhibits all the best qualities, right? So we're talking about water content, oxygen permeability, deposit resistance, um, edge design, surface coatings, right? There's a whole host of these uh, material factors that you're going to want to think about as you're fitting patients with contact lenses. So it's never finding like the perfect lens or that lens would just go to everybody. But you have to think of it as finding the best lens um, based on your patient. So really what is going to be best for their lifestyle, for their wearing habits, um, for, for their responsibility, different things that you need to factor in. So where a high water content lens might be better for this individual, but this individual might actually do better with a low water content. So today we're gonna to look at really the three, three primary ones we wanna look at are water content, oxygen permeability, and deposit resistance. So when we start with the water content of a lens, uh, we're talking about the amount of water retained in the lens when it's fully hydrated. That's the water content of the lens. Um, so higher water content lenses, some benefits, um, well, they're softer and they, uh, initial comfort is great with them. So the higher the water content, the, the more oxygen permeable the lens is. And that's a fact that you really want to remember for your NCLE. So as the water content increases, the oxygen transmissibility of that lens material also increases. Um, so uh, they do attract more deposits as the water content increases. So that would be a negative. So as a higher water content lens, which allows more oxygen, but it will attract more lens deposits, and which, you know, lens deposits um, can have a negative effect on the wearer, whether that's a health, you know, negative health, or just uh, optically can reduce vision, you know, so, so we wanna consider the fact that if you're prescribing a higher water content lens, you are more likely to um, have lens deposition on, on there. Uh, low water content lenses actually require fewer tears to keep them fully hydrated, which is kind of opposite of what you would think, right? So um, a high water content lens, we're talking about a water content over 50%. So this is also a point of memorization. So low water content lenses, it's, it's below 50%. High water content lenses are, are 50% and above or would be classified as a higher water content lens. But a low water content lens, what we were just talking about, actually requires fewer tiers to, for that lens design to reach its full water content. Um, it's a hard concept to, to conceptualize, but if a, if a contact lens had a 38% water content, it would require less tiers to reach that 38% versus a 63% water content lens and the lens designed to a specific water content, so that 38% water content and, and fewer tear absorption, that's actually maybe better for someone with a diminished tear production. Um, so, so really a lot of different factors to consider here, but just knowing that water content, um, higher water content increases uh, your oxygen transmissibility, and also that higher water content makes a lens more susceptible to lens deposits, like you know lipids and, and uh, protein deposits. Those are two key points that you would wanna remember. So if you guys enjoy these uh, little lessons we have here, as a, just a point in the video, I'd really like to say to please share them with your optician friends or anyone studying for the NCLE exam. Um, I really do appreciate that or just give the uh, video a thumbs up and it will uh, boost the algorithm pretty much on YouTube. So in, in, a, in a roundabout way, it will get out to more individuals. So I do appreciate that. So next I wanna talk about, um, we're gonna talk about the wedding angle of the lens, which is just a sidebar, but it's really interesting. I just wanna highlight it here. So you'll hear about the lens wedding angle or the material wedding angle. And really all that's talking about is if you have a bead of water that falls on a material, so we'll say this is our contact lens material. So if that bead of water falls on the material, the angle that is created between that bead and the material is the wetting angle. So actually, we'll draw two here. 
So this is a, the top example here is water, like a droplet of water that just, it did not spread. It just pretty much stayed there. That's a high wetting angle, right? So it's not, looking at this angle right here, it's not a low wetting angle. What about this droplet where um, it really spread on the surface very well? That's a lower angle. So I just want to it just be a great point um, to highlight that lower wetting angles are better than higher wetting angles, meaning that um, it'll take the tear film and it'll help it to uh, spread, ac spread across the lens surface. So just something, a sidebar point that would be great thing to memorize for your NCLE exam. So um, next, talking about oxygen permeability of a lens, right? So we hear DK or DKL versus DKT. Uh, so running out of room here. So DK, or you'll see it as DKL as compared to DKT. So DKL is pretty much talking about the ability for gases, namely oxygen, to pass through a particular material. DKT is the same thing, the ability for that, uh, the gas exchange through the contact lens material, but it takes into account the, the thickness of a specific contact lens. So it's talking about a specific thickness of the lens. So DKL, oxygen uh, transmissibility. DKT is talking about uh, the transmission of, through a specific thickness. So that's a, a point to definitely um, make sure that you're aware of those in case that comes up as a question. Um, so there are two factors that will affect the uh, oxygen permeability of contact lenses, two primary factors. So, and that is the water content of the lens, which we just, we already talked about. So remember, a higher water content lens is gonna allow more gas exchange, it's gonna allow more oxygen to pass through, but then also the thickness of the contact lens. And this is really important if you start to consider the DKT, if we're talking about um, a patient with a high prescription. So let's say they're like a plus eight, uh, contact lens, then you know that that DKT is going to be affected. It's not going to have as as good a gas exchange as if it were like a, a minus two, right? Because, you know, and minus lens is minifying the center and a plus lens, it's just going to have a cent, uh, thicker center thickness and it's going to reduce the oxygen permeability of that lens. So that's when you really want to consider things like wear schedule time, um, or like a higher water content lens, things like that. So you're just starting to think as a contact lens fitter. Um, lastly, I really just want to talk about uh, deposit resistance of contact lenses, right? So it's really important to understand the effect that a uh, lens deposition has on the contact lens wear, um, because, you know, if a lens is uh, absorbing a lot of different deposits like proteins, lipids, and different things, then, you know, you're going to have vision that's not clear. Um, you're going to uh, make yourself uh, more available to certain, you know, illnesses such as like GPC, giant papillary conjunctivitis, which is an allergic reaction from dirty contact lenses from deposits under the eyelid and you get little bumps. Um, side note, you know, 5% of contact lens wearers will experience GPC sometime in their contact lens wearing duration. Um, but there's a corneal ulceration from lens deposits where you're actually effectively a hole in the cornea, right? And, and the risk is that it would perforate and become an open globe and you get a bacterial infection. So contact lenses are a very serious thing. That's why they're a highly, highly regulated medical device. But as a fitter, you're looking at something like a contact lens deposition and the material and is it likely to um, achieve lens deposits you know, let lipids and things like that versus a lens that may not be as likely to um, uh, attract deposits. So, you know, we talk a lot about silicone hydrogel lenses, which are, you know, so popular and they exploded onto the scene. Um, these are hydrophobic lenses actually, meaning that they naturally, they repel water. So silicone hydrogel is a material that repels water. And what they do, they actually um, attract lipids and this makes them more likely for lens deposition because, um, and if you think about it, you know, interestingly, 
the tear film we know is an outer lipid lipid layer, the middle muca uh, middle I'm sorry aqueous watery layer, and then the innermost eye uh, innermost layer closest to the eye um, is going to be your mucoid layer. Um, and the way to remember this is the outer layer is oily, right? So it's like a lipid, a fat, oil. It seals in the tear film. The middle layer is the is the heart of the tear film. It's where we have the ions and nutrition. It's, it's the water part. And then the closest to your cornea is that mucoid because it's sticky, right? It's mucus. It, it allows the tear film to adhere to the eye. So you do have to memorize your layers of the tear film. But what I was getting to is there are, you know, that outer layer of the tear film is, is made of lipids, these, these fat molecules, and they love, you know, they love contact lenses, they love silicone hydrogel contact lenses, and, you know, things that we can do to combat this is to do, you know, a, a daily wear lens that's a daily disposable modality where, sure, it may attract a lot of, you know, protein and lipid deposits, but the patient is changing it every day, so it's not as important uh, to factor in something like lens deposition if the patient is responsible and they're changing it as they should be. Guys, that's all I really want to share today. Those are just some key points on uh, contact lens uh, material selection. I hope this is beneficial and we will see you next time.